All right, this is now recording. So welcome everyone to the Trees Around the Globe Student Research Campaign webinar. And this is the first webinar. This is more of an informational webinar. We won't get into the specifics of, um, you know, talking to professionals about trees in the field and how they work with them. That will be coming starting next month. This is an informational webinar so that everyone can see you know, where we're coming from, can, if they have any extra ideas they want to talk about, things like that. So this is informational a webinar. I'll be going through the campaign website a little bit, talking about what to expect in the campaign, and then talk a little bit about, you know, at one point, you know, how you can look at your data, and then how the data can also be seen from our ISAT-2 satellite at NASA and where that information is going to be available um, at some point. So as you may know, um, our ISAT-2 satellite launched about a week ago on September 15th from Vandenberg Air Force Base. And the ISAT-2 stands for Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite. And it's a really important mission because it's an onboard LIDAR system or a laser altimeter. And it's measuring, to be measuring the height of everything on our planet, including trees. That's why we aligned it to this campaign it's not the ISAT-2 campaign because we didn't want to be mission specific because there's lots of other things measuring trees other than just ISAT. But ISAT will do it unprecedentedly fast and with high accuracy from about 310 miles above the Earth's surface. So we're super excited about this. The data isn't coming in yet. The satellite's just turning on and uh, everything, all the things are getting ready to start taking measurements in the next couple months the data will be out there and publicly available. And I'll let everybody know, of course, as part of the campaign, when that will happen. Um, so as you see, um, this is the Trees Around the Globe Student Research Campaign. And this is the intro kickoff meeting. So when you look at a picture like this, and you should be seeing a picture of trees, okay? These are just a couple of types of trees that you might be able to find in your environment, okay? And in the chat section, if you get a chance throughout this, I want you to put in the chat session what trees mean to you. Um, because we want this campaign to be a, you know, we want it to be, it's a globe campaign, but we want it to be a nice tight-knit community where we can talk about things happening in the environment related to trees, you know, tree height, green up, green down, anything tree related. Um, across our globe. You know, you saw the cool play on words that the globe mentioned there. But, but yeah, so yeah, in the chat section throughout this webinar at any time, just put in, because we do save all the chat information. When the video gets saved, I get a dialogue of all the chat that happens. So, you know, we can really learn for that. And it helps us build the campaign a little better as well, because this campaign, you know, we start off with the one year, but it's, it's scheduled to be a three-year campaign. So everything doesn't have to be done in the first year. So that's why we're, we're uh, really working to uh, start building a campaign. And you know, a lot of what we're gonna do is we're gonna build off some of the expertise and information we learned from our three phases of the ENSO campaign that you know, um, it's a combination of taking the data and then making sense of the data and then being able to use that data that you collected and your students collected and compare that data with satellite data compare it with student data from other parts of the planet using, you know, the GLOBE program, whether you're looking at the advanced uh, uh, data access tool on GLOBE Internet, or if you're looking at the Viz map. Either way, you'll be able to um, use that data to help you understand um, other people's data as well as design research projects. And that's what we're hoping to do because, you know, the GLOBE IVSS is, you know, not too far around the corner and, you know, necessarily you might not have enough data for you know next year's um research project we may okay we may that's all up to you guys how much data you uh you know you put together um and collect but um you know we definitely will have it within the years to come so we definitely want to get more tree height data up there but the tree height data is so important for so many ways so yeah that's great i see uh, people posting in here you know trees are good for life and history fruit, shade, oxygen, beauty, value. There's so many things, you know, personally, professionally, you know, not, you know, there's so many ways, that so many um, different ways that trees, you know, play a role in people's lives. 
And um, I personally love them because they're just beautiful to look at. They're peaceful. You know, they provide shade. So they're just beautiful to look at. And they provide that vital thing that we need to breathe, oxygen. So, uh, you know, that's probably the, probably the most important. I was talking to a student um, the other day on Saturday during an open house here at NASA Wallace Flight Facility. And uh, I said to her, I said, do you love trees? And she's like, yes, I do. And she was probably about 10 years old. And she said, yeah, I love trees. She said, but uh, trees love me. And I was like, well, why is that? And she said, because trees provide me with oxygen and the nurturing that I need. So I just thought that was a really cool way to look at it from a 10 year old. So uh, very interesting. So what I'm gonna do first here, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to reshare and I'm going to start off by going to our website. And I will pop on that right now. All right, you should see the website. Okay, this is the GLOBE website. And what's gonna happen here is, is I'm just gonna show you how to quickly get to the campaign just from a GLOBE website. Because as you may know with the campaigns, going from, um, the first page of Globe to finding the website can be a little tricky. So if you just go in here under, you can go under Do Globe and Measurement Campaigns. Then if you just move over to the right, Field Measurement Campaigns, click on that. It might take a second to, to load up. But then you can scroll down, and so it's still listed there, uh, the Urban Heat Effect Island, but then Trees Around the Globe campaign. So if you click on that, it'll take you directly to the campaign page. So we have a couple things set up here. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple things on each one of these pages so you become a little familiar with the campaign. The campaign began September 15th, and that was because the launch of the ISAT-2 satellite, a mission I work for and many of my colleagues work for at NASA and other places, you know, you know, outside of NASA as well, have something to do with the ISAT-2 mission. But the satellite launched September 5th, 2018, so we thought, why not start the campaign officially on that day? And then it's uh, to be spread out until around September 15th, 2021. So, uh, you know, three-year mission, so super excited about that. Sorry, it's a three-year campaign. Uh, super excited about that. What well, was actually cool because the minimum minimum lifespan for our satellite mission is three years as well. So, but we'll be extending that. Uh, you know, most likely um, way past three years. So, with the launch of the satellite, which measures tree height, we we uh, started the campaign. So, something that's very vital about this about tree height is that it's 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 a great measurement, but it's not the be all to end all measurement. And what I mean by that is, is just by looking at tree height, okay, you can tell some things. Okay, you can look at the, it's a structure of tree canopies, you can do a 3D arrangement of individual trees. Um, the really, trees will help you see how ecosystems function, how, how the planet is cycling through carbon, water, and nutrients. And you can, you can do that by looking at trees and tree height and tree growth, things like that. But when you combine them with other measurements like green up, green down, land cover classification, the carbon cycle, you can really learn about that entire ecosystem in that area. So what we're focusing on is, you know, with the, with the, the land cover classification um, protocols, you know, you're supposed to find a, you're supposed to get a pixel, a pixel space, you know, like 100 meters by 100 meters space or, you know, 50 meters by 50 meters. Um, and then when you take those measurements, you know, you look in all four directions to, to determine what the land cover classification is. Well, that's super important because when you look at the land cover, color, land cover classification, okay, and if there are trees in there, by taking the tree height, you learn more. And then green up, green down, you can look at the seasonal change happening with the green up, green down. So it's, it's a, super, um, a super way to really look at everything related to trees. But what we also encourage when you take these measurements as part of the campaign, that I know a lot of you are taking these measurements already, but we're looking to take baseline protocol measurements. And these baseline measurements are these really simple measurements that you've all been taking all along, like air temperature, surface temperature, and uh, we've added soil temperatures to that. Now, what this means is, is this, these are examples of things that um, you should be taking. 
You don't have to take these specifically. You can take ones that you feel will help you understand your environment better while taking the tree height. We ask that you please take the tree height measurements. And then with that, if you are taking the land cover classification, green up, green down, and or carbon cycle measurements, those are the best ones to take in com combining the data to help understand your ecosystem a little better. But then if you want to get a baseline information about the site that you're currently taking the measurements in, that's why we recommend air temperature, surface temperature, soil temperature. You can even do soil moisture. So, um, you know, those baseline things help you paint a bigger picture of what's really happening in your environment. And uh, that's just, that's just a um, really cool way to do it um, because you can get more data, more people from around the planet, around the globe can look at that data and say, hey, that person took tree height data, but on the same day, they, their students also took land cover classification data. They took air temperature data. They did some other data. So that's what we really recommend with this campaign. And I know some of you um, may not have ever taken tree height measurements, and that's understandable. You know, our, our suggestion there is, is that when you look at the GLOBE protocols, if you have any specific questions, please get a hold of me. And I don't know if my colleague is on yet, um, Dr. Peter Nelson. He's, yep, I see Peter on here. So um, we can answer any questions you like about the, uh, Peter, so I should introduce him. Uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Nelson is from Oregon State University and he is a scientist and researcher and a professor out there. And he does, he deals a lot with land cover. He is actually the science lead, scientist lead for the land cover um, tool, land cover tool that it has just been released for the NASA Globe Observer Citizen Science app. So he is ve very well versed more than I am on the, um, on how to do the, the, all, all the measurements with tree height and, and things like that. So Peter is a, is a, you know, wealth of knowledge when it comes to that. And Peter, sorry, I didn't introduce you earlier. I just noticed you were on. If there's anything you'd like to say, please pop in. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, being part of this campaign. Um, I live in Oregon in, in the western part of the United States where we have some of the tallest trees in the world. Um, some of our trees are over 100 meters in, in, in height. Uh, which is just astounding. And so I'm really looking forward to not only seeing, uh, going out and measuring the trees that I have around me and seeing how those are changing and getting taller over the next couple of years, but also being able to compare what uh, my trees to the trees that you have in your area. And I'm really curious, you know, how tall are your trees? Um, and so, so the nice thing is Brian has really provided a lot of tools um, and ways that you can go out and, um, and get involved with what covers 30% of all the land area in the world. Um, and so, uh, I'm, I, like I said, I'm really excited about this because I spent a lot of time in forests and uh, all kinds of different forests. And so, um, being able to share that data through GLOBE um, and being able to talk about this is pretty exciting. So um, don't hesitate to uh, send us any questions. And, um, and I do encourage you as the leaves are starting to change colors or the leaves are starting to come out in your area, you might uh, use something like the GLOBE Observer's land cover tool, which allows you to take photos and to actually track those changes over time. Uh, as I mentioned in the chat, I, I already have red leaves starting to, to, to happen around here in Oregon. Um, and really, in the next two weeks, those leaves will probably fall off the trees and I'll really get to see all the branches. Um, and so I want to try to capture that. And so I encourage you to also, you know, pay attention to how, how uh, those trees are growing and how they're changing. And, um, and let's share this data together. So thanks, Brian. I really appreciate you uh, pulling us all together as a global community. Yeah, thank you, Peter. So yeah, so that was super important what Peter said is, you know, make sure you use that land cover tool on the NASA Globe Observer because even though that's not your, you know, your typical Globe protocol data like you normally do as a student or a teacher, it's still data. And we're getting data from around the world from, I know I was reviewing some of the photos and we have a bunch coming in from land for land cover already. So that is data that you could use for research project. You or your students could use for research projects. Um, that's all data. So, you know, if you take data that way, that's great. That's all part of the campaign, okay? 
um, even though the stu this is a student research campaign, that data is not off limits, of course, because you'll be able to see that data on the GLOBE page. So that's what's very cool about that is that you'll be able to see citizen science data and you can see um, the, the data that, that, that students are taking. And I should also mention that, you know, in the works right now, and don't tell anybody, oh yeah, wait, this is being recorded, okay. So uh, you know, in the works right now, there will be a tree height measuring tool as part of the app at some point, you know, and I'm not saying when, but it's somewhere down the line and it's not too far off in the distant future. So I'll tell you that. So it's gonna be super cool. You'll be able to do tree height measurement using your phone or your, your tablet. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be announcing stuff about that, you know, throughout the campaign. All right, so let me uh, dive a little further into the website here. And here are, here, this is a page. This is the one that's marked Globe Protocols. And these are the ones, these are just links here that you can take directly and it will take, take you directly to the protocols involved. And the main protocol, and, and forgive me if I say tree height protocol because I keep on calling it that, but it's a tree height measurement that is part of the biometry protocol. The biometry protocol has different measurements as part of it. So the main protocol is biometry, I have tree height. So I'll take you to the biometry protocol, which tree height is a part of it. Okay, you'll also find in that protocol uh, measuring uh, the graminoids or grasses and then shrubs. Okay, with this campaign, you know, we really want to focus on the tree height, but also during the tree height measurements, there is a possibility for you to input what species of tree you're looking at. It's not required. Um, I will tell you when you're on the data sheet, if you don't know the species, you type in unknown. Okay. If you type in unknown, then you'll be able to measure the height measurement. If you don't type anything in, it won't let you enter the height measurement. So it's either you have to know the species, and then if you don't, you can just put in unknown. And that, that, that's, that's fine, okay, because not everybody is, is looking at that, that data. So, um, and then we have the complementary protocols, as I mentioned, green up, green down. So you're looking at when, you know, everything starts turning green, the leaves are coming on the trees, they're budding. <laughs> and then green down when the leaves are falling off, things like that. And then you're looking at land cover classification, carbon cycle, and then some baseline protocols. And as I mentioned, there are other ones, but here we just have links to the air temperature, service temperature, and soil temperature. If you think there should be any other ones up here that you think should be a requirement or should be on this list, please let me know. Either put it in the chat or send me an email and we'll gladly do it. If you think there's something vital that needs to be up here that we missed that can go up here, because this campaign is being built, okay? I don't, I don't have all, we don't have all the speakers lined up for the entire campaign yet because we have people who are gonna come in from, from different, uh, different viewpoints. All right, so that, with that said, we'll go to the webinar page. And on the webinar page, you'll see that the bottom here just shows today's webinar, but one thing that's gonna be super awesome about this campaign is that we are gonna, we are gonna bring in people from all over the world who look at trees in different ways. And I have on here just a, just a short list of some that there's actually more people, more groups coming in and saying, hey, you know, I'd like to be part of this. So I haven't got, gotten Adam all yet, but groups like the National Park Service and the National Forest Service of the United States. Of course, NASA, where I'm coming from, we have lots of scientists and experts who um, work with everything from looking at land cover to tree heights to global vegetation indexes and all that something called the Arrow Cats and Rover Ed Education Network. So this is a group that I work with here at Wallops and um, out in Michigan. It's basically a group that, that puts sensors on kites and puts them on some um, vehicles over the water that uh, help measure these environmental variables. Uh, John Moore from the Palmyra, the Palmyra Cove Nature Center in Palmyra Cove, New Jersey, uh, acquire, analyze, and apply a cube. And what this is, this shows you in an in a education setting how you can apply all these. And then Oregon State University with Peter Nelson, the American Forest Program. And one thing, and I think this is the most important one, is we want GLOBE schools and GLOBE students to present at the webinars. With ENSO, what we did is we did this, and it worked very well. We had schools join in from all over the world. I think one webinar we had, we had, close to 200 students who are participating. 
one or two schools were presenting, but the other students from the other schools around the world wanted to see, hear their, you know, their um, fellow students present on the research they've been doing. So that would be really cool. So if you want to do that, please let me know. Um, like once again, you can put it in the chat. If you're not, not bold enough to um, agree to do that yet, you know, have a conversation back and forth with me and we can set up a time when you can do it. So, um, but this, of course, we understand it won't happen for a little while because not everybody's taking tree height measurements yet. Okay, so what we'll be able to do at one point, and on here is to view the ISAT2 data. I'm gonna go to a website here and this website is called, let me uh, hop over here a second, I can get rid of that. It's called NASA Worldview, and everybody should see the Worldview webpage up there. And it's just, if you just Google Worldview, NASA Worldview, it'll pop up. But what this is, this is a tool that, it, that the data is fed directly from what's called, our, uh, what's called the NASA DAC. And this is satellite data that comes in and the satellite data gets processed and then put up on a global map so then you can actually visualize the data. So for instance, what you're looking at now is you're looking at just um, basically true color corrected reflectance. So you're looking at the clouds, you look at the oceans, you're looking at the land masses. But what we can do here and what we'll have at one point in time within the next, I'd say about five or six months or so because it takes a while to actually get it up here and everything gets processed that we'll have ice at two data up here of, of uh, tree height measurements and other measurements as well, ice as well. So if we go to the add layers, I'm just gonna show you one for example here. If we go to the all, this will show you that there are a lot of things that you can put up here to, to uh, investigate. These are all different um, uh, data sets from NASA satellites. So let's just happen to go into vegetation indices. So what that is, is you'll see here, it gives you choices and it tells you what exactly vegetation indices are. And they're used for monitoring vegetation conditions and can use to identify areas undergoing land cover changes. So this will show you what basically the percentage of vegetation is in a particular area. So I'm just gonna go on here. Don't worry about what normalized versus hit. Normalized is just that, uh, that, that, that generated that, that, that data that was processed. Enhanced means that they added some extra add-ons to, uh, to make it uh, uh, better visible. So I'm just gonna hit the normalized one and then I'm gonna just back out of here. And as you can see, there's a, a, a calendar on the bottom. And on the bottom, I'm just gonna randomly click on a date. Ah, there's my birthday, so I'll click on that date. So August 15th, 2018. So this map comes up. This is from the MODIS instrument. So what you can do is you can look all over the map and see these measurements. And up here you have a bar. And this is showing you, it's, you know, it goes down from point 0, 0.0, 0 all the way up to one. So you can figure that as like a percentage. So this is showing you like the percentage. So if I roll in the dark green section, you can see this area right here is covered by about 87% vegetation. And then if I go over here to the deserts of Africa, I'll go up here and you can see it's way down here in the 0 0.8, 0, oh, sorry, 0, 0 0.08 and 0 0.1. So you can see that data. So this is the type of stuff that you'll be able to do with ISAT2 data eventually. You'll be able to look around the planet and, and get the tree height measurements. And then of course you'll be able to get like ice measurements as well, but since it's called ISAT2, that's our primary goal. So, um, that's coming up, so what we'll have there, we'll have a link if you click on the view, ISAT2 satellite data, we'll have it up there. Right now, we just have it taking you to the ISAT2 page, which shows you airborne data. And this is data from airborne in instruments that use LIDAR like the ISAT2 satellite does. So we just have up here, and then you can click on these and you can look at that data. So that's just what's up there now um, until we get the actual ISAT2 data available um, on the, uh, NASA worldview. So then if you want to retrieve tree height data, say you take data and you want to go retrieve it. If you click here, retrieve globe tree height data, it will take you to the advanced data access tool directly. And then it will show you exactly all the schools that have taken the measurements. And I'm not gonna hit these buttons up here because sometimes it takes a while to do it, but you can obtain the measurement data from all of these schools. Or what you could also do is you go over here and select a date range. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna put in, let's say uh, 2017 
and uh, I'll just do it from there. And if I click add to filter, it'll take a second to uh, load up. And oh, sorry, I have to hit apply filter at the top left so that it did shrink a little bit because it's a more abbreviated timeline. So 93 sites were found taking tree height measurements. So pretty cool. So then you can go in there and obtain the measurement data. So, and you can look at where the latitude and longitude of the tree uh, you found and then the elevation. I should also mention that with this, if you have taken tree height measurements in the past, you might see on the data sheet that things changed a little bit. What we're looking for is since the NASA ISAT 2 satellite will be able to identify exactly where the trees are they're measuring, we're going to include a latitude longitude measurement as part of the actual measurement. So that latitude longitude measurement will allow for um, you to know exactly where the tree is that you measured and then also be able to measure to see exactly where that tree is in the ISAT 2 data. So you can do some data comparisons. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible without adding too much more information. But then also we have, you know, we want you to, you know, measure exactly at the base of the tree. And it says that in the protocol, we've added some verbiage in the protocol to help do that. And sorry if I'm not getting to the, to the uh, messages in the, the chat, but I will get to them uh, in a second uh, after I show a couple of these. So I just want to make sure that uh, we cover all the information here and then we can go to some Q and A. Um, so then um, you can also do that by looking at the carbon cycle data. You can look at do, do the green up, green down data. And then you can visualize tree heights, carbon cycle, other globe data. Now on the map, tree height is not up there yet. And we're working on that with the globe program to get the tree height data on the biz map. And then we have a discussions and documents section here and I'll click on that. And this is where you can come and um, discuss with other people what you've been what you've been doing so i see that you know this just shows sorry member activity that's just people who i who i interact with but we have discussion forums and i'll click on that and it should be just an introduction that i that i you know said hello welcome to the campaign um then we have uh, a document section where once we you know we get documents from presenters or presentations or what have you we can put it up here. So there's a couple of documents up here. Here's some shareables and a tree height matters article. And then we have a blog section that we can put up there. And I believe everybody on globe has the ability to blog now. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that um, in the future, uh, getting some blogs up there. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen right now. So I can not, so I can see everybody who's actually on here. So, um, does anybody have any questions? I'm um, looking at the here. Oh, that's cool. I saw, um, yeah, permafrost. Okay, the permafrost tube. That would be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that would be really cool. And I see, um, uh, in Worldview, you can only get NDVI indexes and in, uh, snow water. Yes. Uh, you can get those. You can get the, uh, I'm pretty sure you can get the snow water indexes on the world view. I think I have to, I'd have to go look at that again. Yeah. Permafrost would be really cool to do. Yeah. There's lots of uh, world. Yeah. If you look at that list that I showed you on world view, there are lots of other things that you can do uh, as part of that. So there's lots of indices that you can actually measure. So it's, it, it, you know, sky's the limit on those. And with every NASA mission that comes out, more is added to it. So if anybody have any questions, you can say them on the chat or you can um, say them out loud if you like and just unmute yourself. Because remember I said this, we want this to be a nice informal uh, introduction to the campaign. And as I mentioned, we'll have um, some great webinars coming up um, in the next few months because we're going to have a try to do one a month um, for the first year, at, le at least for the first year. And there will be people from all over the world who look at trees differently. When I say look, I mean study, research, all those, all those possible things. Hi, Brian. My name is Jennifer Taylor, and I'm a global partner in Colorado. I'm working with um, our 
museum here at University of Colorado in Boulder, and they have an exhibit called Tree Space, and we're going to tag team with them to do Green Up, Green Down. Would this be a possible citizen science outreach project from an informal education point of view? And then my second question is, we're also tasked with um, revising the fire fuel protocol. So we've been working with yeah. Holly team. So yeah. is there a possibility of bringing in um, the fire fuel protocol, especially from the app point of view? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the first part, could you mention the first part again, what the collaboration was? The first. Uh, yes, it's with our um, on-campus museum. So they've got a, a public exhibit and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a great tie-in. It's, it's called Tree yeah. Space. Met with our, our, our staff there and they're going to be starting up with the green down protocol and then grew, do green up in the spring. So, so basically yeah. using what you're doing as a campaign from a student research campaign, can it be yeah, that, expanded that, to uh, informal ed setting? Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, um, we love to get the word out at science centers because because you know we have people coming in we have students visiting them all the time we have teachers who work with them they work as docents things like that but um to have it as a as a partner program as part of the campaign that's that's perfect um yeah but i definitely like the fire fuel one doing to include in that for sure and the permafrost i like that idea too i'm actually going to note that down right now the fire fuel and the permafrost <laughs> All right. All right. Hold on. Yeah, all right. Got to come closer at least. <laughs> How can a satellite measure a tree? So how do, how do the satellite measure trees from space? Was that the question? Yes? Yeah. Okay, got it. So yeah, so I said too, uses an onboard laser system. And what it does is it fires a laser pulse down from the satellite, which is flying about 310 miles above the earth. And what it does is it bounces the, la bounces the laser photons from the laser pulse off the, the planet's surface. And that would be area where there's trees as well. So it bounces off the top of the trees, off the tree canopy. And then those photons travel back to the satellite. So what happens there is we calculate the time it takes the photons to leave the satellite, hit the trees, and then come back to the satellite. So then we do that repeatedly over time, and it will be able to tell us if there's any growth or change or you know, if the trees came down or whatever. Over time, we'll be able to see that change. And what's crazy about that is um, the satellite is going to be firing off about 10,000 laser pulses per second. And those laser pulses per second um, translates to for every laser pulse is about 300 trillion photons. It sounds like a lot, but laser pulses are light, right? So what we're what's going to happen is for every 300 trillion photons that we send to Earth, we're only going to get an average of about 12 back to the satellite because light gets absorbed, scattered, it gets reflected every which way. So we're only going to get about 12 back, but that's still going to be a lot of data. The satellite will be sending back about a terabyte of data a day from the satellite back to NASA. So, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of data. So, in short, I went a little long on that answer, but in short, the laser pulses fire from the satellite, hit the Earth's surface, and then bounce back to the satellite. And then we look at those measurements repeatedly over time, and we'll be able to see changes in tree height and tree measurements like that. I saw Bob, you unmuted. Go ahead, Bob. I, hey, what's going on? <laughs> How'd that satellite launch go, right? It was good. It was a busy day. Um, Friday, the day before launch, I woke up at 6 a.m. Pacific time, and I went to bed at 11.30 p.m. Saturday, Saturday evening. <laughs> yeah. That's why you get paid the big bucks, guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I see Aiken's there. Aiken, what's going on, big guy? <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Or yeah, Good. Okay. All right, good. Um, yeah, I was just wondering with um, – We've got that problem with the um, invasive species, like kind of growing all over the trees and all. So, I mean, is there some way we can use this to keep track of trees that like are there versus trees that get overrun by the uh, invasives at all? Or is this not something that would be applicable for that? Oh yeah, definitely you can. Yeah, okay. so I'm sure that, you know, um, but those species that are growing, are they, do they grow up or out or both? 
from the trees? Well, yeah, I mean, the trees we have, I mean, especially around here on the parkways and all, uh, we've got mile a minute, bittersweet, all these things. So the yeah. trees are growing straight up, but then the vines just keep growing up and wrapping themselves yeah. around the trees. And eventually they're taking down the trees. And I mean, I would love to just see the change in tree height from, well, unfortunately, we don't have the data, but, uh, you know, from probably 15 years ago to now, because all these vines have just grown up over these trees, and the trees have died, and it's, it's nothing but these vines just growing up the trees. Well, so, well no, uh, no pun intended, but that would be a killer research project. Okay. <laughs> I'm still not retired. That's why I got on this thing late. I had yeah, school today. That would, be, that would be amazing. That would be a great research project for sure. Well, you know, something like that, you know, looking at it, you know, wherever you start, I mean, obviously they're, they're invading the, the trees already. Um, but, you know, from now, now, you know, over the next like half a year, year or so, like see how that, how that height has changed. So you can actually, you know, take the height measurements, but then also, you know, snap a picture of it and then you'll be able to combine those two. All right. Well, that's something I mean, we should probably talk about and all and, uh, you know, somehow hooked that with the water quality. Uh, I've got a girl, Natalie, that uh, wants to do a globe project. She's a smart kid, and she yep, wants yep. to use it for her uh, project. So, uh, all right, we'll, we'll have to talk uh, and see if we can put something together that maybe she can focus on. Great. I Look, saw a oh, comment. Yeah, this, is, this is Bear. Bear just, he doesn't like to be alone. He gets okay. ticked off when I'm on the computer. So yeah. he's got to be up in my lap. <laughs> I saw Arbind also, he commented, how can I use the ISAT2 data for groundwater study? So you can, um, groundwater would be tough um, because we're just bouncing off the surface of the planet. You can look at the levels of, you know, the oceans. You can look at the levels of streams and lakes and reservoirs and all that. You know, it's not going to penetrate into the groundwater, but you'd be able to see that surface water and that elevation of the, and the height of that surface water. So um, as far as, you know, specifically, um, um, you know, you can't, won't, won't be able to penetrate it. The data won't be, you know, penetrable data. We won't see that. It's just bouncing off the surface. So we're getting the surface measurement. Now, what would that, I mean, just out of curiosity, you're measuring tree heights, but then all of a sudden, suppose the tree's not there next year. I mean, how, how does that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 like Peter, Peter can, uh, you know, say something, but he, no data is good data. Meaning that if there's areas where there's no trees, that's what I also want to also mention that I know Peter, I see Peter shaking his head because he's, he, under, he knows that, he tells me that all the time, you know, where there are no trees and you take measurements, that is awesome data as well. We need to know the areas where there's no trees. So can this kind of pick up where deforestation is taking place or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that works. That would be, uh, yeah. that would be interesting to see too. I saw Pat mentioned soil moisture protocols or complementary data said, yeah, yeah, we can add that in there too. So, you know, honestly, there are so many uh, of the globe measurements that could be part of this, you know, you know, I'm, I don't know about the, you know, the, the ruby throated hummingbird, but maybe, or the uh, reproductive phenology of seaweed. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but uh, there's some other ones, lots of ones out there that you can measure. And I'm not, we're not going to say it as the campaign, you know, the, the uh, leads of the campaign, we're not going to say you have to do this measurement and this measurement and this measurement. Well, we will tell you, you, you should do tree height, you know, and you should do like land cover, you know, ones like that, because it'll help you paint that bigger picture of what you're trying to understand. You know, just looking at tree height, you know, that'll tell you something. But when you combine it with the, the green up, green down and the land cover classification, you can learn so much more. And then you have that more robust data set to work with. And Anna, yes, the uh, the ISAT2 satellite images will all be free once we get the data, as, like MODIS as well, um, because that is NASA, those are NASA um, products, and NASA is paid for by the American taxpayer money. So NASA never charges for the data. It might be tricky using the data. Um, you know, some, some places want to use the actual raw data, which is very hard to do because you have to have the right, you know, things to... Uh, you know, modify it or, you know, so, but, but it, it's tricky, but then we have data that, you know, the visualized data, like that you saw in worldview, you know, the process data and that, that, that's a lot easier to use, but, but yeah, it's all going to be, all going to be free. Anybody else have any other questions? I can just tell you as an, well, trying to be ex-teacher. Um, I mean, all this stuff is great and there's so much to do. 
but it would be great if there was some year curriculum that somehow could be worked into the educational system. I mean, fortunately in New York, we have regents and you know, yeah. they've got that final exam at the end of the year and they don't test on tree height and you barely have enough time to get everything in. So I, I'm just, you know, devil's advocate here trying to figure out, is there some way that you've got this great program? I don't know if there's maybe national, I know they were going for national standards and all, but that would be something to keep in mind down the road. Uh, if there was some way to turn this into a, a year curriculum and then maybe schools could offer it as a course and this way you could get more data, more people involved and all. Yeah. We're trying to do that with water quality. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I saw a couple comments about contacting me. Yep. I threw my email down there. Anybody can contact me whenever. Um, that's fine. I, you know, and I know it's uh, tricky sometimes because our schedules are different because I know Egan might be there, might be middle of the night in, uh, you know, Nigeria and then other places as well. In Croatia, it's pretty late too. So, you know, thank you all for, uh, for hanging out here with us. But this really shows that, that this is going to be such an important campaign because um, nothing like this has been done as far as like looking at trees. And we have so many people around the planet who look at them for different reasons. Um, and all of these reasons come back to us understanding how our planet's changing over time um, because trees are so vital and they, they help us explain so many things from, you know, our ecosystems to, um, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, you know, photosynthesis, all these things, um, you know, if there's blight, you know, or, or, you know, you know, invasive species, you know, killing trees. So that's what we really want to, uh, to, to figure out. And, um, and Peter mentioned in the comments, you know, about 30% of the land is covered in trees. And I remember hearing something somewhere that, you know, what is it? It's East Coast versus West Coast United States. Something if you don't see a tree, that means that one was taken down. And if you see a tree, one was planted or something. I don't remember how that works. East Coast, West Coast, but um, trees are vital. That's that's all I have to say. And that's you know in the in the um, with the campaign, you know, tree height is our basic measurement that we want to have as the foundation of the campaign. But there's so many other measurements that we want to include. I can't stress that enough. So just out of curiosity, quick question, I came in late, so you, I'm sure you probably yeah. discussed it earlier, but if we want to figure out how to get involved with this thing, the best thing we could do at this point would be get the GLOBE protocols. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Yeah, you want to do that. You want to go to the GLOBE protocols. And I mentioned that, you know, I know a lot of people on here are concerned because they haven't ever taken tree height measurements. And honestly, it's not a, it's not a hard measurement to take at all. It's pretty quick. It's one of those ones, though, you have to, you know, once you figure it out, you know, it's pretty fast. Um, and then there's lots of uh, simple measurements. So kind of slid over here. I'm going to pop this up on my screen, but I was using some of these actually yesterday with some pre-service teachers in, um, in Maryland. I was giving a lecture at a local university and, you know, here we have this, uh, here's, it's hard to see. Here's a clinometer, the one that you can make that you get the, the, the template online and you get the paper template. And then all you do is you tape a straw up here and then you attach a string with a washer underneath it. And then when you look up at the tree, you know, when you look up at the tree, so I have to do it opposite here. Yeah, when you look up at the tree, you do this. And as you look up, you see that that angle changes. So that's, that's the way you measure tree. This is just the clinometer. Okay, that's just what you use. Simple as that. You know, there's also other ones that I know some of my colleagues like Jeff Bauman in, um, Michigan at Shoemate Middle School use, and we use this as well. He actually showed me these, I think, and this is a cool one, but it all, this works for um, measuring the, uh, it's called the simplified clinometer technique when you're on level surface. So you have a simple clinometer like this where you hold it like this and you have a 45 degree angle already built in. You have a line of sight through these circles and then you can line the tree height up that way by looking at the top of the tree through here but then you have to multitask when you use this, you have a mirror right here and you have a level. So when you're in the top of the tree and then you back up or move forward to the point where the level, the bubble in the level is centered, then you stop and then you can take your tree measurement. And with that, that, that measurement is the easiest, the one on flat ground, because all that measurement is, is it's the distance from the base of the tree to your feet 
added to the distance from your feet to your eyes. You add those two together, that's the estimated height of the tree that you just measured. That only works on the, on the flat surface. There are some other ones where you're, if you're standing on a hill and you're, you're, you're look, standing below the tree, if so if you're like in a little ditch or something or down a hill, and you're looking up in the trees above you, there's another way to do it. And then if you're standing here and then the tree's down, you know, the base of the tree is below you, there's another method to do it. But that's all included in that, Bob. So, yeah, so that's my suggestion is go in and check out the, the protocols and, uh, you know, read through them. I know a lot of you haven't done it, but I, see, I know a lot of you have done it because I've seen the, the, the tree height measurements on there uh, as well. So, yeah, so get involved that way. And, you know, as Bob, as you know, and everybody else knows, my, my uh, door is always open to come ask questions. You know, I'll get to it, the, you know, as quick as I can. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're, very, yeah, you're very good at getting back. I do have to say that. And I'm glad you didn't tell me I had to go back and talk to my trigonometry teacher, calculus teacher to do this stuff because it wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't happen. We do have uh, on the back, though, we do have nice. Uh, we made it a little easier. We have these little table of tangents that you can actually it's on the website as well. So, you know, once you figure out the angle, you, you just match the angle up to the angle. And then uh, it gives you what the tangent of that angle is. So then you just plug that in and. Uh, you can figure out your tree height. So, yeah. And, um, and I know uh, my colleague, Peter, you know, Peter is a, a great proponent for all this, uh, you know, all the tree height measurements and the land cover and everything is part of the campaign. And, you know, this would be a great campaign without him because he definitely has more knowledge than I do about trees and land cover. So um, those of you who know me in my 18 years so far at NASA, I deal primarily with ice and soil moisture and because uh, I've been working on ice set one and ice set two for like my whole career, it seems. So, uh, but yeah. So, uh, does anybody have any other questions? We should begin. I'll, I'll take uh, give a second to uh, anybody needs to mute. Hello, Brian. Right. Yep. Hi, Akin. Um. Thanks for the beautiful presentation. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I, what time is it there, by the way? Yeah, it's this seven forty-nine p.m. Nigerian oh, okay. time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we, I'm, I'm very, very excited, and uh, I, I believe that there are lots of things we can actually benefit from the the, the proposed uh, uh, research. So, uh, you know, we have, uh, I have a lot of um, views and um, what we can actually um, derive from, from this, uh, I mean, the, the research. You see, I, I believe that, um, you know, in this part of the world, Nigeria in particular, you see, the, the, we, we are losing a larger percentage of the forest cover on yearly basis, not only to desertification, also to you know uh, the the anthropogenic impact, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uncontrolled uh, deforestation, you know, as a result of uh, forest, uh, you see, bush burning, and then um, you know, lumbering. So I believe that um, we can also uh, uh, leverage on the data to actually uh, take. Um, some beautiful measurements in Nigeria. So I'm looking forward to um, having access to the data. And then also I have my students, which I will also bring on board. And they will be able to do a lot of, a lot of research beyond the, <laughs> beyond the, this, the, beyond the, the I mean, um, the, uh, at the advanced level. You know, we we work so much with uh, satellite data, uh, remote sense, uh, remotely sensed data, both um, the air and um, the, the satellite based. So we we'll able we'll be very happy to assess the data and work with them. So I really appreciate yep. uh, your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So I see again that you know you really have a a personal. Uh, personal mission with this as well. It has a personal, trees have a, and you know, the desertification and, you know, anthropogenic uh, prob issues, I mostly probably, but issues, um, it really brings this campaign as a personal 
you know, a, a way to, uh, to understand what's happening in your area, you know, by looking at what you're seeing in the real world, you know, then versus what you'll be able to see through measurements. So I think it's the perfect combination of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Well, thank you so much for, for joining the campaign and looking forward to, to seeing what you guys come up with. And you remember, you know, we've emailed back and forth often. So, you know, you can always, you know, come to me with any questions or anything. Anybody can hear my email is right there. So yeah, no, no problems with that. Thanks so much. All right. Anybody else? One last question. Who's that guy wiggling in the back behind you in the window? Oh, that's Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Okay. Yeah, that's Mr. Bean. That came from Ireland. That's just my, uh, it's a, um, uh, <laughs> Well, the, the solar things that they move, solar powered things. So it's Mr. Bean just moving back and forth. Looks yeah. like he's having a good time, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24, well, well, at least, uh, I think 24 hours a day. I don't know if it powers up enough to go all night like that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay there and find out, huh? Yep. <laughs> all right. All right, anybody else? All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys something, and this will be part of the recording, but this is something we've been working on. I just want to show you this. Since you guys are here to the end, I want to show you this. This is a cool video. You might have remembered probably four or five months ago, I put a blog out, and there was a call put out on Globe for sending you know, in some videos of trees and why trees are important to you. And you know, some of you, maybe some of you who are on here, submitted that information as well. So um, I'm going to show you this cool little video that we, that this is just a prototype. This isn't even a final video. So even though it'll be on this recording, that's okay. Because, you know, the more, you know, it's just going to get better over time. So let me show you this video here. I thought just, this was really cool. So um, let me pop it up here. All right. Share my screen. All right. All right, let me maximize this. You all see a black screen right now? Yep. All right, here we go. But, uh, nope, that's you know, right. We Sorry. put our recommendations in college. went the wrong way. Um, but you definitely have Sorry. all different types of feedback. And so we could talk through those, but you could also huh. um, use your discernment for it. And so some of it, you might, Sorry, in, it the, wrong in the future, you might okay. just say, we chose not to take that recommendation and this is why, and, and that's okay too. Um, I think in terms of the title, and that might Not be where sure some of the confusion playing, was, but, yeah. um, I think the first title, um, that one said 32 minutes. I thought that was a lot of trees. <laughs> I'm still here. Just finding a I think I figured that out. I'm not sure what happened. It went on and then it just disappeared off my screen. So uh, yeah, not sure what happened there. So, oh well, it's all good. All right, let me uh, pop in here again. I gotta open something up here. Yeah, there it is. Sorry about all that. All right, now I'm gonna share my screen again. That was strange, but all right. Now we have it. All right, black screen. All right, here we go. Good. 
nice. Yeah, I just thought it was a cool little video, and hopefully we can build upon that and make that even a better video. Um, but that was just showing you a little bit about, you know, um, what can happen. You know, trees mean so much to different people, and they mean different things. So that's one of the things we want to do with this campaign is we, you know, we, we want to take measurements, but we want that personal aspect as well. All right, so does anybody have any other questions, comments? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Brian. Liz, maybe I should ask you this. Hello, are you hearing me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, please, do you have information on the spatial resolution of the, the imagery? Of which? Are you hearing me? Yeah, I hear it. Of which? I mean, of which, the, I mean, which, I mean the product of the ice, uh, the ice sat. Um, oh, for uh, ice sat. Yes. Do, no, you, yeah, have, so, do you have information on the, the, yeah, the so, spatial resolution? Yeah, so the spatial resolution will be about 17 meters. Okay. And that spatial resolution, though, will overlap. There'll be some overlapping data. The, the uh, 17 meters is, is just a single footprint size, okay. but it'll overlap. So okay. we'll get, we'll get um, denser data. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? we got fall coming up in New York here, so hopefully I can get you a lot of good colored leaf pictures. Yeah, yeah. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You have, a lot of, you have the big tourist season up there then, too. No, oh, yeah, yeah, no question. In fact, yeah. a short, quick story because I know everybody's leaving. When my son was in Boy Scouts, we went to West Point, and uh, there was a boat there and this big, huge yacht. And we thought the guy was there for political reasons or whatever, you know, for West Point. And it turns out that this guy could have been anywhere in the world, and he was in the Hudson with his yacht because he loved when the trees changed color. He said it's the most beautiful place on the planet. So that yeah. was, uh, yeah, I couldn't disagree with him. That's for sure. It was nice. Are you getting the deluge we're getting right now? No, it's uh, it, we stopped raining. It was raining for the last two days, but okay. it stopped raining today. Okay. All right, so I saw in here that uh, somebody mentioned registering uh, for the campaign. Oh yeah, register. Yeah, registering for the campaign. So um, all you do is you just go in there, and when you you can sign up under the webinar page. And then just what that allows you to do is that that basically signs you up for the webinar. Your information goes in the database, our database for the campaigns, and we know you're part of the campaign. Then you get all the notifications of everything that's happening with the campaign. So uh, that's that. And uh, Mike, um, we don't have a way to do that yet. I have I might talk to somebody at Globe to see if we can tag the data for the campaign that it would say, oh, this is for part of the campaign. And uh, yeah, so we don't know of how to do that. I, I, well, I, it might, they might be thinking about it, but I'm not sure. So I can ping people um, to try to figure that out. But that would be great to know. And then um, another question, sorry. Uh, let me go in here. What is the name timeline of the app you mentioned earlier? Is that the NASA Globe Observer? Is that the one you're looking for, uh, T. Graves? Yeah, it's a NASA Globe Observer, and that's available for Android, and um, you can find it for iDevices as well. Yeah. Yeah, you can find it in the mobile store, whether it's Google Play or the app, you know, um, app store for Apple. All right, well, I want to thank everybody for participating and joining in. And as I mentioned, this will be this has been this has been recorded and um, I'm going to stop the recording right now.